So life history patterns. Life histories contain characteristics of populations. Things like the number of births per reproduction or the age of reproduction or the lifespan. All of these things can influence and shape and define a population. Um, the probability of an individual living its entire lifespan. All of those things can influence the life history patterns. Each population is able to capture only so much of the available energy and how this energy is distributed among its lifespan, um, reproductive events and care of offspring has evolved over time. Uh, related species may have very different life history patterns. So for example, toads and frogs. Toads and frogs have very different patterns in their behavior in how they um, care for their offspring. Um, so when we're talking about our life history patterns, we're going to be characterizing categories. Uh, we're going to be using two categories um, for characterizing organisms. Um, one is going to use, well, we're going to be using R. R is going to be the rate of natural increase of a population. K is going to be the carrying capacity of the environment. Members of some populations are subject to either R selection or K selection. What this means is that our selected patterns or our selected um, life history patterns means that they are found in an unstable or unpredictable environments. Population growth is ultimately going to be controlled by density independent factors. So the population size is going to be relatively low to K. In other words, the, the environment could support a lot more individuals, but we're going to see a very low population size in relation to what could actually be supported by the environment. Our strategists or individuals who have this sort of life history pattern, they're going to be known as opportunistic species. They tend to have incredibly large numbers of offspring and they tend to be very small in body size. They're going to mature early, have a short lifespan, um, and do not invest much time in parent or energy into parental care. They tend to be really good dispersers and colonizers of new habitats. Great examples of these would be things like bacteria funguses, insects, rodents, annual plants. They're going to reproduce large numbers of seeds and spread them early and often. Um, they're not going to live for very long. Bacteria, very, very short lifespans, but in their short lifespans, they can reproduce very quickly and grow into massively large colonies. Bacteria do not spend too much time on parental care. Pretty much as soon as bacteria splits, we've got two adult cells ready to go do, ready to go do their thing. Um, so those are going to be our strategists. K selection, on the other hand, um, these are going to be found in stable, predictable environments. The population size is going to be controlled by density dependent factors. And the population tends to be near K. Pretty much we're going to find as many, you know, individuals as that environment can support. Um, these tend to be what are known as equilibrium species, or we're going to be living right at, at that uh, logistic growth curve. The population is going to be right around that stable equilibrium phase. They tend to produce um, small numbers of offspring, tend to be larger in body size and mature later in life with a longer lifespan and more energy invested in parental care. They also tend to be very strong competitors. Since their lifespan tends to be long, um, they, they're going to live for a very long time. They tend to have very small number of offsprings, uh, offspring, and they're going to mature much later in life. It's important um, that they survive long enough to live life. So they tend to be pretty strong competitors. Great example of this would be things like long-lived plants, birds of prey, large mammals. Those are all going to be our K-selected strategists.